There are 180 days in a school year, meaning that there are 180 lessons that a teacher is responsible for delivering. In my second year, I had four preps, which meant that I had to create, let's do the math here, 720 unique lessons. All the while, I was expected to grade assignments, communicate with parents, work lunch duty, advise students, monitor the hallway, the list far exceeds what any one person is capable of doing. It was ambitious of me to think that I could create that many lesson plans, even more ambitious to think that I could individualize my content. While I would love to say that I am meeting the needs of all of my students all of the time, that's simply not true. Differentiation has long been a white whale of mine. Only, if my career was an adaptation of Moby Dick, it would read less like a page-turning, white-knuckle pursuit and more like a poorly constructed manual on how not to drown. For reference, in a 7th grade unit, my curriculum offered three different sets of books, leveling the reading to better meet individual needs. But this created more work for me, tripling the amount of books I had to read. I had to skip that unit. I settled for a one-size-fits-all approach because at the time, it was the only approach that worked for me. But what if differentiation didn't have to create more work for the teacher? I would love to be able to reword language on an assignment, simplifying it for students who need it. It's equitable. It's definitely admirable. But for the teacher that's up until midnight because they're only one assignment ahead of their students, is it really all that practical? This video provides practical advice for how to differentiate content. We'll take a look at two different sets of exceptional learners, learners with intellectual disabilities and gifted learners. We'll start by identifying the behaviors and intellectual challenges of each group, and we'll finish with recommended strategies and assessments. The American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities defines intellectual disability as a disability characterized by significant limitation both in intellectual functioning and in adaptive behavior as expressed in conceptual, social, and practical adaptive skills. In layman's terms, learners with intellectual disabilities have limitations in cognitive ability and often lack skills in proper social behavior and self-care. More practically, what this means is that people with intellectual disabilities are likely to experience deficits in attention, memory, language, self-regulation, motivation, and social development. There is less consensus on the appropriate definition for gifted learners, but Sternberg's triarchic theory of intelligence suggests three main kinds of giftedness, analytic, synthetic, and practical. Essentially, analytic giftedness centers around one's ability to understand a problem, whereas synthetic giftedness deals with an individual's insight and creativity. Finally, practical giftedness involves the application of an individual's analytic and synthetic giftedness. At risk of blunt oversimplification, students with intellectual disabilities fall on one end of the spectrum and gifted students fall on the other. For gifted students, class content may appear unchallenging because they have mastered the material. For students with intellectual disabilities, class content may be too challenging, mastery frustratingly out of reach. It is possible to speak to both sets of students at the same time. Enter student-centric learning. Speaking plainly, student-centric learning allows students to decide what they want to learn and how they want to learn it. For lower-level learners, this autonomy asks for their help as you collaboratively build scaffolding together. For higher-level learners, this honors their talents and passions. Student-centric learning will simultaneously address the deficits a student might have in attention, memory, language, self-regulation, motivation, and social development, while also addressing a gifted student's analytic, synthetic, and practical giftedness. Putting this idea to work, here is a student-centric unit plan. The unit plan asks students to apply concepts learned in class to media that they encounter in the real world. It begins with whole class learning, progresses to small groups, and culminates with an individual assignment where students construct a written essay and a video essay. Because this unit is student-centric, 17 in-class days are devoted to independent work. Where students with intellectual disabilities are concerned, this time is spent chunking the larger assignment into smaller pieces, receiving feedback from peers, and meeting with the teacher in one-on-one -on -one conferences. 
The regular due dates and supervised work time help the student with their working memory, self-regulation, and motivation. The multimodal project helps with attention, language, and motivation because it asks students to pick a topic they are passionate about and a topic that they're comfortable with. For gifted students part, the unit gives them problems to solve as they construct rigorous essays. Think analytic giftedness. It grants students the permission to work creatively, think synthetic giftedness, and it asks students to engage in real-world application, think practical giftedness. In sum, student-centric learning simultaneously raises the floor and ceiling of the classroom. Because the teacher is no longer doing the bulk of the intellectual work, they can use their newfound resources to support struggling students and to challenge gifted students. Student-centric learning is both flexible and uncompromising. It's flexible in that it allows teachers and students to individualize the work. It's uncompromising in that it refuses to succumb to the notion that one size can fit all. No two students are alike. This is true even for the neurotypical student. Therein, though it would be easier to ask exceptional students to be more normal, it is better to ask students what it is that makes them exceptional, neurotypical student or not.